Do you ever wonder the impact a simple garden can have on a community? The memories it creates, the bonds it forms, the life paths people take. For many individuals in Southwest Detroit, Calic Urban Gardens is that impact. In 2012, we were looking for a place to grow fruits and vegetables. As a collaborative effort between Southwest Detroit Environmental Vision, the ideal group, and GM. Before Cadillac Urban Gardens was ever a community garden, it used to be the former executive parking lot for the Cadillac plant back in the 70s and 80s. But when that plant um, had moved out to the suburbs and elsewhere, the whole facility, including the parking lot, was, ab was abandoned. I didn't know what to expect when we first started because when the ideal group came to me and said, we're going to do this, I said, oh, we have, we have some time to do this. And I said, oh, we're going to start this started in April, we're going to have this in the ground in May, we're going to grow, we're going to be growing fruits and vegetables, we're going to plant in May. For the past 10 years, this garden has been a staple part of the Southwest Detroit community through the impacts made and the lives changed through the space. While well, unique attributes of the space can be accredited to it being Southeast Michigan's largest raised bed garden, to even the world's first garden to utilize GM shipping containers as raised beds, the people and community impacts made are far greater than its unique history and development. We are a nonprofit. We're a small grassroots nonprofit, and so we're always scrambling to find resources and trying to get as many resources out to the community, whether that be you know just the fruits and vegetables in general. In 2009 and 10, I studied landscape and nursery management at Michigan State. So I had an interest in, garden, in designs and gardening and landscape, landscaping. And then I started working my internship at SDV in 2010. I did the designs for Scar City Park and Cadillac Urban Gardens, but I hadn't had a whole lot of formal training. And I went back to get my master's degree in landscape architecture and urban planning. In 2011, Scarsony Park and Garden was started, and originally that was going to be the site for Cadillac Urban Gardens, but due to prior land use and history, uh, the, garden, the garden was not uh, able to be put into Scarsony Park, rather it just became Scarsony as we know it today, and it just went on to its 10th year anniversary. However, community still really wanted a community garden. We worked with General Motors, and at that time they had shipping containers that they were looking, they were asking us what could we do with these shipping containers. They originally shipped uh, automotive parts from Korea to the Lake Orion plant and then they would go straight down the waste stream. But in order to become more sustainable, the idea came uh, to develop these shipping containers into raised bed gardens. And we started with about 30 raised bed gardens and I think now we have about 330 raised bed gardens. So every year the garden keeps getting bigger and bigger and has become a really big staple on the community. So it started off as just a really big community effort to have access to free fresh produce. The really important and unique part that I think about Cadillac Urban Gardens is the fact that it is completely free for anybody that walks in so individuals can come and take as much as they want whenever they need it throughout our growing season. In 2020 alone um, in Muscovin we were able to produce over two tons of produce and reach over 800 Southwest Detroiters which is really awesome. I think the biggest success of the garden has been the community involvement and all the young people that have brought their parents to the garden. The young people that have become interns with whether it's Southwest Detroit Environmental Vision or Ideal Group. I met a lot of my really, really great friends and they all turned out to go to Crystal Ray as well. And through, without this garden, I probably wouldn't have had the chance to interact with them due to us all being in different grade levels. Just thinking about all the kids that started here when they were 15 or so, like Dolores, mm -hmm. and watching her now as a master's student. I think she's almost 23, uh, about to graduate from the University of Michigan. And now she's leading the next, next group of young people. So it's really special. It just really showed me how the how built environments can really impact your life and the quality of life that you had. I come to the garden as much as I can. It's usually like twice a week. It used to be long before I used to work here a lot more often, so I was able to work here and then volunteer right after work and still put in many hours in the week. I do recommend people coming here to work here because it's a very good environment to work in. There's really good people and there's many different projects you can work on. What I did was 
was just gardening basically, but I didn't know there's so much different things you can do with the rain catching system, air pollution, everything. There's a lot of different fields you can get into and get real good experience just based off of that. Aside from its scenic history, programs such as Cadillac Urban Gardens Garden Leader and Garden Madrina programs are the foundation to which the garden builds a system of equitable access to culturally relevant foods. I learned mo a lot of skills. A lot of it was mostly teamwork and leadership because when I first started, they had me in charge of the volunteers from DT, GM, Ford, all those types. And I really was able to like make sure things were being done well and like really being able to step up and find a voice and kind of grow out of my shell and everything and network a lot. I was able to network so much with a lot of like the garden parties and whenever executives came around, it was a really good time. I learned a lot. Some of the ways that the garden has helped provide for the environment is making sure making, making the water clean, making sure the plants are clean, making sure like the benches and stuff is clean. Like, Cadillac like Urban Gardens has helped influence to get rid of food insecurities by being able to grow more plants and vegetables and helping the people in need get what they need to get. Addressing food insecurity and uplifting community is at the heart of our work. But the stories and memories gained by those involved with us are what keeps spaces like ours growing, evolving, and thriving. The produce is available every day, weekdays, and it's free to everybody. The opportunities with making connections at the garden go beyond just my own self. They go helping me expand my network at school, at jobs, or even just in the communities. One of the main events held at the garden are the family fun days in which many of my friends, family, or even people I meet here um, come to them and that's where we gather and just have a good time. One of our, one of our Southwest Detroit Environmental Vision's biggest event is the garden party, which is normally the first Thursday of August every year. So it's a fun event where we invite local chefs who may not have received a lot of exposure, um, who might be up and coming, and give them opportunities to pick things from the garden, make things from the garden, and get exposed to crowd to other people who are, might not be from the area, and maybe that leads to more success for them in the future for their business. We're all just learning together and bonding together. As we learn, we grow together. So that's a big thing. Coming here to the garden and seeing all these people caring and putting into the same mission motivates me to keep pushing forward a better planet. It has changed my perspective on how I see the world because you're surrounded by people who care and push towards a better um, environment. While the garden is smaller in size compared to most large-scale farms in the city, with only being 0.8 of an acre, despite its size and space limitations, the garden is highly productive. It develops people in a way throughout a variety of skills, as when people volunteer, they develop new skills such as communicating with others. Well, for me especially, I've my communication skills have grown and as an intern specifically for JDYT here um, I've learned a lot of new things such as like doing research for the article that we're doing so far and we've learned a lot of new things as such as collaborating with each other and working together as a group instead of just being one alone and we learn to keep each, each other in touch so like we want to fall off other place when it comes to fresh produce, like not just me, but like to everyone in the community, uh, the garden does have a lot to offer to me, and as well as the people in the community of Southwest Detroit specifically, and some people that come out of like other areas as well. And like this garden might provide to them in search of produce that they want and like that they might need for a healthy meal, you know? Because some people don't have access to healthy meals and just rely on like instant food or like on fast food because that might seem much cheaper to them instead of buying fresh produce which nowadays like the prices go up for them due to the value and like the hard work that goes into them 
and like I feel like the garden like provides for those people as well. But aside from that, like the garden itself, yeah, like it's a new environment that I like to be in and being productive because like we get to be in an outside environment instead of being inside the whole day. Garden leaders and madrinas strive to create and promote food sovereignty across South Lucy Drake. Through this, they are able to participate in the development and implementation of agricultural based activities, which in turn not only promotes place based learning, but also provides residents with access to fresh fruits and vegetables through teaching youth and adults where the food comes from and how it's grown. I feel like my job here has increased a lot from just being like an intern to not being a full staff. Uh, over the years, I've noticed that it's not just the garden, it's a place for the community to be together. And I've noticed this through families that desperately need fresh produce because I know that the supermarkets here can be really expensive. And this is like a low income area here in South Coast Detroit, so it's not really as affordable to get free, fresh, healthy foods. So, what I would like to say is that something that this garden has changed me is becoming more aware of how badly the people need fresh produce, especially families that have faced um, issues with ice, since they have to feed more kids or family members because of the mutations, and it's already hard because it's a struggle for families to feed their own families, including other people. So I feel like the garden, the way it has changed my sense of viewing the world, it's changed my sense of being proud of what I work for, and I can that I'm proud to have a place that supports these type of events. My favorite memories working at the garden would have to be like every day, just like meeting with people, um, giving people clothes, um, spending time with friends. Like I feel like when you go to work, you're just like, oh, you have to go to work. But when I work here, it feels like normal. Like I actually look forward to working here. Um, I enjoy it a lot because we make a lot of happy like, memories here. We're always like, it doesn't feel like work, it just feels like we're hanging out. And it helps people make the produce and it gives people like the space to relax and work out. An important thing that the guard has taught me would have to be like to go after things. So whenever like, there's an opportunity, just go for it. That's why I bring up the garden. Especially with the scholarships, I feel like with the scholarships, I'm really kind of a great of mine too. But ever since um, I've been working here, uh, I learned to do the the Michigan State for scholarship and there's like some other opportunities that have opened up for me here but just by working here. So the people can be involved in the garden through many different things. So for example, um, gardening could be a, a way of having like therapy, like nature, natural therapy, a place to wind down, relax, and we have groups here where they kind of like look for that. I feel like the garden teaches you how to speak to new people, new friendly strangers, it teaches you how to handle like a lot of crazy situations that happen around here. And not only does it teach you people skills, it also teaches you like basic gardening skills, like how to water, how to weed, how to prune. And I feel like a lot of people don't notice how important that is, but like it's really important, especially like if you have the opportunity to garden and not only does it benefit you, it also benefits like the environment. So I feel like it's like a double-edged sword working at kind of like the gardens. It teaches you food skills and gardening skills and I feel like that's just like what's going on. This is all within its 180 day growing season. Since 2014, the garden has been able to collect over 50,000 hours of service within the space. Volunteerism and food production is vital for many residents here in Southwest Detroit who struggle with food insecurity, where the stability and accessibility of having access to free produce through its growing season has helped address food insecurity issues in many residents who have utilized this space. I started working with the guard and realized that there are thousands of people with probably millions of different viewpoints and perspectives on the world. And I saw the beauty of that, that there's so many different viewpoints and that I myself could be in touch with a lot of those different viewpoints and meet so many different people and find so many different ideas. Really the people are the thing that really makes the guard, not just the produce and the mission of the guard. It's the people and the experiences that you gain. And I just love seeing how people will start off working in the garden and not really know anything about it, not knowing what they can do for the community. And then by the time they leave a few days later, 
they have a whole different perspective on the world, on food insecurity, on urban produce, on agriculture, and on recycling, environmental justice, climate change. Someone can have their mind completely changed and flipped around just by spending a few days in the garden, meeting the people who are garden leaders and field supervisors at SDP, meeting all these people and knowing their experiences and then meeting us and seeing our experiences changes their viewpoints drastically and gives them a better understanding of how the world is in places that they might not be. On average, the garden yields over two tons of free produce grown by the community. Community-based citizen science and research can lead to empowered neighborhoods and improve community health. Environmental sensitivity, personal investment in issues concerning one's environment, and increased knowledge and skill in using environmental action strategies can empower residents and lead to wide-scale community-level change. Here at Catholic Urban Gardens, we take a community-based approach to research to ensure information is used to improve the lives of Southwest Sea Traders, our programs, and spread awareness of environmental issues occurring here in our Southwest Sea Trade community. Last year, since the pandemic, we had to work a lot more in the remote areas, so I had to work on the computer a lot. And last year, the task that I was assigned was to be in a research group, and basically in that research group, we pretty much study the air quality around Detroit and the impacts that we have on the residents here and we studied all of that and we, we did that in an online article and which ended up being published on, online and that was, that was a pretty great experience I'd say because it taught me how to work with others because I did work in a group and being able to work with others let me, you know, it got me more comfortable with it, it got me more comfortable working with that research uh, field because I've never really done research. I've done it at school from time to time, but I've never been up to that type of level where it's like one that's actually going to be published. If I say that, I'll a lot of people that's The way the garden has influenced my career interests, it reinforced my idea of uh, how I wanted to work in the outdoor field with my hands. Because at first, I became interested in this job because I, I was already working outside. I was already working with my hands. And this job experience just me to, the, you know, it made me realize that I for sure want to stay in that field. And, you know, as I started moving up on high school, you know, getting to college and, you know, looking around that field more, my supervisor, who has been graduated for a while now, has helped me out like, with choosing what I want to do for the major, as a career. And she's helped me, like, you know, work on that journey. Just like, you know, uh, she showed me all the doors that there is that I could take and she uh, right here at the garden and said you know figuring out all that figuring out all the opportunities that I could take in the environmental field and I'd say it's I'd say it definitely showed me things that I probably would have known. Partnerships with university entities such as the University of Detroit Mercy has allowed us to analyze and understand crop yields within the garden. Here, Dr. Victor Carmona of the University of Trade Mercy is able to go over some of his strategies to community-based and citizen science here in the garden. So we are using a technique that we borrowed from uh, paleobiologists that use fossil leaves to look at ancient climates. When you use living leaves, like these guys over here, you can actually tell about microclimates. So the technique is to look at a pore known as a stomata, and these leaf stoma uh, can be peeled off with tape and clear nail polish. You end up with a slide that um, you can prepare, and then we put it into the microscope, and you end up with a nice view of the microclimate effects on the plants, which means that you can tell if the plant is water stressed, if, you, if the plant is doing well in terms of um, heat, temperature, all the little microclimate conditions you need to make uh, photosynthesis optimal. We have some really exciting future plans at Cattle Urban Gardens. Uh, for so long it has been a community fruit and vegetable garden and a living laboratory for experimentation. This year, we are planning to install green stormwater infrastructure mechanisms like rain gardens and rain catchment systems and create a more sustainable garden, reducing 
maintenance in the garden, improving fruit and vegetable yield, and doing many things. And everything we do, we work with community members to design. And we'd love to see more people get engaged and we would grow, grow as people and community members and leaders. So we invite everybody else out to, everybody out to come pick fruits and vegetables, give us some volunteer assistance, and come out and have some fun with us at Cadillac Urban Gardens. Cadillac Urban Gardens is more than just a community garden. For the past 10 years, it's been a place that's had a lasting and sustainable impact on Detroit and its surrounding communities. Cadillac Urban Gardens provides a space for community members to come together to grow fresh fruits and vegetables, promote food sovereignty, and beautify their neighborhood, all while promoting place-based intergenerational learning. Cadillac Urban Gardens not only helps create a system of equitable access and availability of culturally relevant items across Southwest Detroit, but develops the tools needed for residents, young and old, to become leaders within their own communities. Here at Cadillac Urban Gardens, we just don't grow produce, but leaders and environmental stewards who have already begun to enact change regarding food access and health across Detroit. While the garden continues to grow and change, we hope that our communities will continue to do the same.